Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another special edition of the show. I have Edward Paginet. Thank you. Was it close? All right, good. It's good. <laughs> um, we're over here at, at Chateau Moulin Avant versus the other. There's a ton of them that have Moulin Avant in their name, but Chateau Moulin Avant. And uh, this is this is my last interview, and um, and I remembered to plug in this time. So um, anyway. Uh, this is my last interview for the trip, and uh, I want to first of all just start off uh, just thank you for spending some time with me. Um, also, it was uh, I know you said it would not have been a problem, but this was kind of my last minute, a, a, somewhat of a last minute um, uh, request for an interview. I mean, it was a couple weeks ago or so. Um, so I had friends of mine in the industry that that was were able to do this. So I, I absolutely appreciate this. Um, and this is an iconic, um, an iconic uh, chateau. And I definitely wanted to visit here, um, besides just visiting Beaujolais, because like I said earlier, this is Chablis and Beaujolais, even though we're talking Gamay and not Pinot Noir, are my favorite wines from this area. Um, but again, like I said at the Ponce interview, I've really have enjoyed the Burgundy side of everything and the Pinots and the, Ch and the Ch uh, Chardonnays that are there. And it's really um, opened my eyes and... and, and uh, uh, give me a greater appreciation of Burgundy, which was one of the big goals of this trip um, to to do that. But enough of that. Um, we're here in Beaujolais, and Edward, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and your family, and then also the history of uh, the chateau? Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, thank you first to, to come and visit us. You're welcome. Uh, we are, we are very pleased to have you. Actually, uh, the history here is pretty uh, ancient. Um, the first vines being planted uh, in Beaujolais, Burgundy, Rhone, and so in Moulinvent, it's uh, second century after Christ, uh, when the Romans uh, uh, did build their roads and planted vines from mm -hmm. part uh, of the roads. And so this is the case here in Moulinvent. Um, actually, the, the real the time when uh, the wines from uh, Moulinvent started to be found uh, is actually in the 17th century when uh, a merchant called uh, Claudius Bross uh, introduced the wines uh, from Moulin Vent to the court, uh, so uh, to the king uh, Louis XIV. Okay. And actually he got the agreement of Louis XIV for the quality of the wines being produced there. Um, there are many, many uh, history that shows that uh, wines from Moulin Vent have historically been uh, reputed as the Grand Cru of the region, I, I could say. And actually maybe the, the most uh, uh, the most uh, interesting uh, story about that is that um, in the 19th century, uh, the village of Burgundy started to add the name of their most famous cru to the name of their village. So Givry becoming Givry Chambertin, Vaune, Vaudromanet, etc. Mm -hmm. And actually <coughs> here, uh, the name of the appellation is definitely this windmill, this moulin vent, but the name of our village is Romanesh, Torin. And actually in 1872, Les Torrents, the terroir of Les Torrents, we are actually right sitting on it, uh, was reputed as a Grand Cru. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, the village of Romanesh became Romanesh Torrent because in exactly the same fashion than what happened okay. in, in, uh, in uh, the north of here. Uh, so, yeah, there is this reputation, this uh, reputation of a Grand Cru, this uh, important terroir uh, here in, uh, in Moulin Vent. And uh, so now, yes, our domain, uh, Chateau du Moulin Vent, we, we, we want to, to produce good wines, uh, terroir wines, which are also able to age, which is very important. And uh, as for us, the Pariné family, so I, I am uh, Edouard, the son, uh, we, are, uh, we have been uh, acquiring this uh, domain in 2009. So that's now eight years that we are here uh, making, making those wines and uh, investing a lot of time here for the vines, for the bottles to be produced and mm -hmm. sold uh, in a, pretty much uh, everywhere in the world. And uh, yeah, that's very exciting because we have the, this uh, feeling to be on this uh, terroir and this diversity right. of terroir. 
Very nice. Um, so we'll, we'll start where we we started in the um, in the vineyard. So um, we went to the vineyard right outside. I guess it's like right over there. Yeah. Um, and kind of talked to me about um, how the how the vines are are taken care of in the farming practices that you use. Yeah. Uh, actually, we are so we are uh, we. We kept the the gobelet pruning, which is the traditional uh, pruning here in a, in a whole the, in all the region. So this is very traditional to here. Mm -hmm. uh, what uh, we have adapted it uh, uh, for having uh, the better maturity possible for the vine with a, a complete trilization uh, system. So it enables uh, yeah the photosynthesis to be the best and also for us to work the soil uh, more easily than mm -hmm. if we did not have the trilization. So that uh, that is a great um, I think a great system for us to make a, to to work the, the vines in in depth and to be respectful of the of the soils here in Milan. Okay. Um, and about how many hectares do you have? So in the chateau we have 30 hectares. Uh, the appellation is uh, 600 hectares big, so it's a pretty small uh, appellation. And uh, what is one of the main force of the of the domain is that we are located in the mid-level part of the appellation in terms of altitude, so between 200 and 300 meters, mm -hmm. uh, where actually in Burgundy basically you see the the best the, the premier and grand cru in this mid-level part. Mm -hmm. This is also where we are here, so uh, soils which are mostly made with uh, granitic sands, but which can have some silica, which can have uh, some uh, clay at certain in certain places, uh, which can have some metallic oxides veins here and there. Mm -hmm. so, and also here, what's important to, to say is that in uh, in Moulin Avant and other crew, we are in a part of France which is much more uh, healed, I would say, than basically uh, in Burgundy, which is a coat, so right. pretty homogeneous uh, coat. Here, it's much more healed, so we also have more. Uh, ability to have uh, various expositions, who, to have uh, different slopes, right. etc. Et right. Um, and then a fun little tidbit um, before we walked in is that we are in the Burgundy, well, what the, we're in the, the, the department of... Yeah, the, we are in the 71st department, which right. is Sonne Loire and part of the Burgundy region. Right. And but right then... across the, <laughs> the road, we are in the 69th uh, department, which is Rhone, and part of the uh, Rhone, uh, Rhone Alp uh, region. So mm -hmm. we are really between two uh, regions, uh, administrative regions of France, and also right. between two regions of Rhone and Burgundy, Rhone down south and right. Burgundy up north. Yes. Yeah, so, um, and, and, and the reason I wanted to bring that up, besides it was just a cool little piece of trivia, is that. Um, you know, we talked about this earlier. Is that um, while, in, in the legal aspect, Beaujolais is part of Burgundy. Burgundy really is its own entity in many ways, and I think um, the Burgundians and the what are they? The Beaujolais? What? what yeah, the, uh, the Bourgogne, and then what? What? Are, what are the people the, from Beaujolais called? The Beaujolais people. Yeah, the, Beaujolais, the, Beaujolais, the Beaujolais people. Um, they kind of have this somewhat independence of each other um, attitude. And uh, I, I put it a little crudely um, off camera, but um, I mean, there's there's definitely a, a, a separation, I think, in in the the how people each each part of the each people from each part look at the other. Um, so um, so I, I find that just I just find that a little fascinating that mm. um, it's always as as a student of wine, um, I've found that uh, like you go to the Burgundy website and they they acknowledge Beaujolais, but it's it's almost like not it's almost like yeah yeah they're they're there but concentrate on this and then the Beaujolais side is like yeah we're we're part of Burgundy yeah, yeah but yeah. you know um, so it can be very confusing sometimes when you're uh, studying and with the what you may be asked a question yeah. about Burgundy is that we have to remember as, as as a student that it's still part of Burgundy Beaujolais is but it's also a separate kind yeah, of a separate absolutely. thing. First, uh, for two main reasons, which goes together. The first is that we are on granitic soil, which is mm -hmm. not the, right. the case in Burgundy at all. And because we have Gamay, uh, which actually is the best variety for this granitic soil, mm -hmm. just uh, north from Rhone, the Gamay has the best maturity period and levels for right. these granitic soils. So Gamay is just uh, the perfect uh, variety for this uh, for this soil here in uh, in Molavo. And I know we didn't discuss it, but that was. A lot of that also has to do with what Philip the Bold didn't yeah. like Gamay yeah, 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 in yeah. Burgundy, so yeah. he rip it all out. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, but uh, as I've talked about in, in the last weeks or 
I, I release once a week. Mm. So last week's interview or the last interview, um, you know, the uh, I, I really enjoy the the wines that are made from Gamay. So uh, so we we talked about the we went to the vineyard and he showed me um, the windmill. So that's an iconic piece of of, of the town or mm -hmm. uh, of the area. Uh, how long has that been there? Uh, it has been built in the 15th century, yeah, and uh, it's now classified as a monument historique de France. So it's considered as a um, uh, historical uh, building for for French, uh, right. for French, uh, for French, um, uh, yeah, French wine region. I yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's pretty cool. I'm going to get a closer look at that later. Um, and um, and then we uh, so we talked about the vineyards and and everything you have here and and. Uh, Kind of the exposition that you should have and um we also went into the winery so let's kind of talk about how the grapes come into the winery mm -hmm. and and what your process is in there yeah actually the process is a uh, it's a very uh, simple i would say so first of all of course uh, we have this uh, uh, respectful viticulture uh, on the 30 uh, hectares of the domain uh, then uh, the harvest is normally happening uh, uh, in beginning of september here in moulin mm -hmm. Uh, everything is handmade, everything is uh, collected in small cases to uh, avoid um, uh, oxidation of the juices. And then uh, we don't work at all with carbonic maceration or pretty, I would say, uh, classical uh, Beaujolais uh, style uh, right. uh, vinification. We do traditional winemaking, so pretty long extraction of about three weeks, normally with uh, cold pre-fermentation and uh, a use of wall bunch, an addition of wall bunch, which depending on terroirs and vintage goes from 10 to 40% approximately. Okay. Um, so yes, we uh, this is for the winemaking and for the aging. On average, the aging lasts 11 months, it may last a little bit longer, a little okay. bit shorter. And a third of the volume is uh, oak aged and uh, two thirds is inox tank aged. That's the, also the main idea, mm -hmm. knowing that in the Chateau, uh, with the 30 hectares that we have, we do produce about 7,000 cases a year, so very low yields of 25 hectoliters per hectare okay. because of the vine age, which is 55 years old on average, because of the viticulture, which is more stressful probably for the wines, for the vines, and also because the environment of Moulin Vent with these winds, with those uh, metallic oxides rich mm -hmm. soils is not giving so much uh, production right. to the to the Gamay variety. So all of this makes a pretty small production here. Right. And then and this year was a, even smaller. And this year yeah. was uh, unfortunately very small because of uh, uh, the very big uh, hail, uh, uh, how to say? Uh, hail storm. Yeah, hail storm, mm -hmm. thank you. Uh, that we have got on the 10th of uh, July and uh, which, uh, yeah, which uh, took uh, say approximately 70% of the volume for right. this uh, 2017 vintage. So we have uh, harvested what we what we could. We have um, uh, sorted a lot also on two uh, sorting tables, mm -hmm. and uh, we'll do uh, the best quality that we can with uh, right. what the nature has given us. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, you, you have to you have to you have to do it. You have to work, you get use what you have. You can't just yeah, magically absolutely. create grapes. And actually, <laughs> and actually, I'm saying that, but the quality of what we have got in the, in the end of the sorting table is pretty nice. I think we. Uh, 17 should be close to a vintage like 11, which in Moulin Vent is a great vintage. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's a very, um, uh, it's a pretty classic vintage for 2017 with a bit more maturity maybe uh, than uh, usually. So okay. I think the good comparison will be 11 vintage for 2017, yeah. All right. Um, and then uh, we were, we actually talked about in the vineyard um, and I just remembered about it. Um, you also have some holdings in Puy Fousse? Yeah, okay. that's, that's a very new project, I would say. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's only a, a year uh, old. So we have acquired a bit more than four hectares in the Puy Fousse appellation uh, on nine different terroirs of the okay. appellation. So here also in Puy Fousse, it's a lot about diversity of terroir and mm -hmm. uh, different uh, style of wine that we can produce there, just like in Moulin Vent, so that's pretty right. logical. And so, yeah, the, the wines are just uh, finishing their aging now uh, in, uh, in the Chateau also, uh, since both appellations are 10 kilometers far away from each other. And so the wine should be uh, uh, should be released, I would say, beginning of 2018, so okay. very soon. Yeah. Very nice. Um, 
And so you, we talked about the barrel aging and you do all your mallow in, in the in the barrel. Yeah, mallow. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, um, yeah, I think we actually kind of talked about all that, didn't we? <laughs> See, it's, it, 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 if you haven't figured out, I just go, I just kind of repeat whatever we did and I just kind of go in order uh, to remind myself of things. Um, I'm trying to think if we talked about some other stuff that maybe I'm, I'm, I'm skipping over. Maybe about the specificity of Moulin Vent as an yeah. appellation. Yeah, let's talk about uh, which that. Is, uh, which is something very, uh, very important. I think that, uh, as I said before, Moulin Vent has this reputation of being the Grand Cru here in the region. And I think there are two reasons that uh, which explains this. The first one is that we have this windmill, this Moulin Vent, and uh, actually, uh, if this windmill is there for has been there for the five last centuries, is because the winds can be pretty powerful. And actually, right before harvest, end of August, beginning of September, when it's still pretty hot here, when the winds are blowing, they are able to dry to concentrate the berries, and so it uh, helps the wines of Moulin Vent more specifically to mm -hmm. have more concentration in comparison with other crew. Uh, so this windmill is a proof of the specificity of Moulin Vent as an appellation. And also, um, something which is also very interesting is that uh, till uh, 1919, in the village of Romanesh-Torin, which is just uh, over here, uh, there was a manganese mine. The manganese is, um, is a component, a natural component, which uh -huh. goes in the composition of uh, inox, actually. Right. And at the time, uh, this mine of manganese in romanes was the biggest production of manganese in France. So that was a pretty huge production for, for France. And the manganese by itself has not a big impact, but the manganese combinates natu naturally with metallic oxides and noticeably iron and copper oxides. Okay. And actually, here in moulin -Vent, more specifically than in the other crew of the Appalachian, we have this presence of metallic oxide, which also has supposedly, but this is pretty logical, uh, an impact on how the vines will take uh, from uh, the soil. And actually, okay. it's not taking a lot because of the presence of these oxides. And so this is also a way to explain why the gamay here is not producing so much and is pretty uh, producing less and keeping okay. the, this concentration also. Um, and then I, mean, I should have asked you in the mid year about the wind. Um, and, and forgive me if I really don't know this, as I probably should know this. This is not related to the Mistral? No, no. Because that's not farther at all. south. That comes from. Um, yeah, comes it's, from... It's, it's mostly coming from west, southwest direction. And the, just behind us uh, uh, in a corridor which is between Fleury and uh, Moulin Vent. Okay. Actually, it's just very local, you know. It's just yeah. like, uh, I would say, just like Hailstorm is so local. Mm -hmm. These winds, they just take a, a little corridor which is very close to Poncier mm -hmm. and normally the winds come from the west to us right but it's a very local yeah wind yeah. Uh, okay. corridor I would just say. It, it just really just trying to remember rem, 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 uh, figure out remember my French geography and where the Mistral <laughs> actually comes from we're yeah you know, we're not there you know no, no, we we're not there. the northern limit of the Rhone we're really yeah. not in the Rhone exactly. so <laughs> Absolutely. um and uh, I was trying to think if we had anything else that we that we chatted about because we did talk about the wind and I forgot about that. Anything else we uh, but about the wines of the of the domain? So yeah. all the all the wines of the domains are estate produced. They are all coming from our, our fruits. Mm -hmm. uh, we do two blends of different uh, um, uh, terroir, uh, Couvent des Torrents and Chateau du Moulin Vent, and then some single vineyards which right. corresponds to a specific uh, terroir of Moulin Vent. So. So far, we have uh, isolate uh, Veria, Chancourt, Rochelle, and a very small cuvée, uh, which is called Claude Londres. Um, so yes, that's what we produce in Moulin Vent, and we try to show uh, the potential and the diversity right. of this terroir of, uh, of Moulin Vent. Do you have any other um, uh, terroirs that you might be looking at in the future? Or are you still... In Moulin Vent, you mean? Yeah, or... from, yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as like, you know, any more specific, any, uh, any other specific terroirs that you already have that you might look at yeah, creating? Probably I think in the in the in the section of uh, Veria, Rochelle and Chanco we also have terroir like Les Torrents, uh, like Le Moulin Vent, which are very central, uh, historical mm -hmm. and well reputed terroir of of the Appalachian, which could probably uh, be interesting to follow for the for the for the years to come. Uh, but nowadays we are pretty uh, for 2017, we are pretty happy to already right. are able to show these uh, uh, three different uh, terroirs of Moulin Vent with uh, Verrières, Chancourt, and Rochelle. Okay. And uh, but yeah, 
hopefully in the in the next years to come we will uh, have uh, more of them all right very nice um i think we've pretty much covered everything that we talked about um you have anything else you want to uh, do I actually about the history of the domain? Saying yeah, that, we we, we yeah. kind of did briefly I, I, talked about yeah, it. We yeah. use a little more. That'd I talked more about the history of the mm -hmm. appellation, but in the domain. So this is a very historic domain, to taking the name of the the appellation itself, right. Chateau du Moulin Avant. Uh, the domain is dating back from 1732 at the latest, so probably uh, from uh, older than this. But the mm -hmm. first proven date is 1732. And yes, uh, the the what I what I can also say is that uh, the wines from here, from the Chateau du Moulin Avant, they were already on some very old wine list uh, of restaurants in the beginning of the 20th century, and that's pretty fun to see that the wines from Chateau du Moulin Avant were priced pretty much the same way than Vaune Romanet, Gevray Chambertin, or things okay. like this. So that's also uh, um, uh, yeah, a testimony of uh, how uh, Moulin Vent, uh, was uh, and Chateau du Moulin Vent, uh, was reputed at this time, and hopefully we will uh, uh, yeah. we will take the the lead to uh, to uh, to to show this again. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, you know, the as a region, I mean, as a whole region of Beaujolais, I mean, it's um, we look at it as um, it's a great value uh, as far as a wine because you do have uh, some very expensive Burgundies, and we, I know we're talking different grapes here, um, but um, you know, we as as Psalms and just consumers, I guess. You know, we look at Beaujolais as, as you know being a great alternative, but at the same time, you know, I recognize that these are outstanding wines in general. Mm. Like they pretty much are underpriced. Yeah. Um, so at some point, you know, someone's going to figure this out. I mean, as far as the consumer, and they're going to start. It, it, it'll it'll get bigger. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, I absolutely love these wines, and they're kind of like a lot of Psalms. <laughs> love them too, um, not because of the price point, but they love them because of what they are. Yeah. Um, because they also love expensive wines. <laughs> and but, I think uh, that uh, yeah, the, the wines from Moulin Vent, uh, they have, they are pretty some wines from what I experienced because they can pair with a lot of various uh, dishes. Mm -hmm. First of all, because of course they are good quality. They are not so known, so it's also a discovery for many uh, customers. Right. Uh, also, what's uh, what's very important to to mention is that. We have the, this chance to have the Gamay as a, as a variety, and uh, it, we are so proud to have this variety only, uh, only for us, or almost only for us. Right. This is really, really good. And the Gamay is very reputed for having this fruit, and which is one of the main components mm -hmm. of the wine, and this is really important. But I guess that on terroir like Moulin Vent, on this pretty serious and, uh, and uh, how to say, uh, poor terroir of Moulin Vent, yes. We are also able to produce wines which are able to, to be kept for a long, long time. Depends on the vintage, of course, but on a very nice vintage like 9, 11, like 14, 15, this is a 20, 25, 30 years old cellar right. ring that we, uh, we can experience with this wine. And this is not so much known, but there are a lot of um, uh, history and uh, uh, how to say, a proof of people mm -hmm. telling they have got this blind tasting right. with some different burgundies and one moulin vent was there and the moulin vent is just you know uh, taking the taking the show right so that's also important to know that these wines on good vintage just like any wine region in the world they have this ability to be aged for a long long time yeah um yeah it's like i said the the, the wines themselves here uh, as far as the region and i mean i've had some of the moulin vent before um you know these are spectacular wines and and if you see a Beaujolais, like Cro Beaujolais, you definitely should be checking them out. Um, don't just wait for the stuff in November. Um, <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> anyway, I'm not trying to badmouth it because you know that it's 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 just like anything else. There's a market for everything. Um, but um, if you want to have some really cool Beaujolais, you need to do the cruise and and all that. There's what ten yeah. ten crew. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's. Um, got a lot, and they all have different personalities and and all that. So, um, you know, I I think um, you know, this has been a wonderful trip. Uh, this has been a wonderful visit. Uh, I want to thank, thank you. you again uh, thank you. for taking the time with me. Um, uh, we're going to be tasting some wine off camera, but um, uh, you know, definitely want to uh, again in, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, oh, it was a pleasure, and great to pleasure. give you a great tour of the place and. Um, I look forward to trying some wine here in a little bit. 
I appreciate. And you uh, who are seeing us, uh, you're welcome here in Moulin Vent to come and visit. Uh, we have everything for, for you to taste and to experience the region. So yeah. feel, uh, feel free to, to come. Absolutely. Um, all right, folks, we're going to wrap it up. Uh, as always, you can click the links above to friend me up. And then I'll have links below uh, for the Chateau and how you, can, how you can get in contact with them uh, and come see them. Uh, it's a great experience. And, I mean, you, you need to come by. Uh, you need to come by Beaujolais. You need to come by this place um, and, and check out some incredible stuff. Uh, that's going to do it. Uh, again, thank you all for stopping by, and we'll see everyone again next time. Bye-bye. Au revoir, as they say. Au revoir. <laughs>